Video five of chapter six, we are going to continue on in our discussion of binomial random variables. Specifically, we get to talk about the formula that we get to use that we did not talk about in video four. So in video four, we talked about a scenario of rolling a fair die three times. And we wanted to know how many fours would pop up. And so to figure out the probability distribution, we went through this tree diagram of row one versus row two versus row three, and what are all those different outcomes, and what were all those probabilities multiplied, and then we grouped together ones that had common outcomes, um, and we got all of these probabilities. So what we're really going to focus on in video five is how can we avoid making this tree diagram? And so let's find the pattern within our tree diagram. So first I'm going to start with the x equals zero scenario. And in x equals zero, we did not roll any fours. We did not roll a four, did not roll a four, did not roll a four. And in our tree diagram, that was only this one situation down here. And we had to take five six times five six times five sixths. So if I were to kind of simplify this a little bit, um, when I multiply something by itself three times, well that's just that value to the third power, right? And there's only, again, one of these situations. So for right now, it's gonna look a little weird. I'm gonna say it's one of these five, six to the third situations. Now, where it's really gonna make more and more sense is when we talk about the other situations here. So again, uh, zero, this was when we took one and there was one situation in which we had five, six to the third power. Now, so let me read, put that back in, five, no, one times five, six to the third. Okay, so now for x equals one, we got to see one, four, but there were three different situations in which we could get one, four. Either that four came on the first roll, the second roll, or the third roll. But in all of these situations, there were two five-sixths probabilities and one one-sixth probability. So in the end, I had a 5 sixths that was going to be multiplied by itself, so it's going to be squared. And then there was also a 1 sixth probability, but there's only one of those. Now, how many of these 5 six squareds times 1 sixth to the first situations do we have? Again, there were three of them all together. So we would take this and do repeated addition, or we could talk about multiplication. So now this is three times... 5 sixth squared times 1 sixth to the first power. Now, you might be already seeing a little bit of a pattern emerge here, but maybe not the full pattern. So now for the x equals 2 scenario. So if we saw two fours, then that means we saw one roll that did not result in a four. And there were three different situations for that, because the not four could have been the third roll, the second roll, or the first roll. Now, these numbers are slightly different because we have one more 1 6 than we did previously and one less 5 6 than we did previously when x was 1. So we have repeated 1 6 we have two of those, and then we only have one 5 6 but there were three of these situations. So let me write all these back out. So this was 1 times 5 6 to the third, and then we had 3 times 5 6 squared times 1 sixth to the first, and then we had three of these, that was 5 six to the first, and then 1 sixth squared. Are you starting to see a pattern emerge, maybe more with the fractions than with the coefficients, with the numbers out in front? Because that's its own special pattern. Now, for the final scenario where we saw three fours happen, there was only one of those circumstances, and that's when we had all fours, and each of those was one-sixth, so this is really one-sixth to the third power. And again, there was only one of those situations that emerged. Now, what I'm going to do is pull all of these together. And so, instead of writing the five-sixth first, I wrote the five-sixth second, and I put the one-sixth first. Now in this first scenario, notice I wrote one-sixth to the zero. I didn't get any fours, I had zero fours, but I had three not fours. I had one four and two not fours. Then I had two fours and one not four. And then I had three fours and zero not fours. 
So the exponents started to change on every single one of those situations. And then the other thing that we're gonna have to talk about or where do we get that one, three, three, one pattern from? And some of you might know where that actually came from because if you took probably Algebra 2 or Pre-Calc, you probably talked about this particular uh, pattern. Now, thankfully, on the AP Stats exam formula sheet, this formula is on there. So you don't have to have it memorized. You just got to be able to find it on the sheet. So here is the formula. When x is a binomial distribution, and you have to know that it follows a binomial distribution first, with parameters n and p, and n represents the number of trials, and p represents the probability of success that has to stay constant in a binomial distribution. Then if you want to find the probability where x, your discrete random variable, equals a specific number. So notice this x is smaller. This means a specific value like 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or all the way up to the nth scenario here. Then we have this, which looks like a fraction, but is not a fraction. That is a combination formula. And I'll talk about that in the next little sequence here. But then we take that combination part times our probability of success to how many successes we want to see, that as the exponent. And then we want to multiply that by 1 minus the probability of success, which would represent the probability of failure. And then we want to see n minus x of those. So however many leftover successes from the entire number of trials we have would represent the number of failures that we would see all together. Now, the combination part, you do not need to know this particular formula because we're just going to use our calculator to come up with those particular values for us. So the combination formula uses factorials, and you may or may, or may not know what factorials are, but it's not a big deal. Okay, so just, just to know, there, there is a little bit more math to this that we're not really going to dive into. Now, some of you may be familiar with Pascal's triangle. In a Pascal's triangle, we have ones going along the outside edges here of the triangle. And to use Pascal's triangle, what you do is you add up two adjacent, uh, left or right adjacent cells. And for instance, these two ones here would add together and then you write down what the sum would be below it in between them. So like this one and two add to be three, and this 10 and five add up to be this 15. And it just keeps going on and on and on forever. So the one, three, three, one that we saw earlier with our example happens to be the third row of Pascal's triangle. You may call it the fourth row technically, um, but that's where this is coming from. And so if you remember Pascal's triangle, you can use it. Um, and we don't necessarily need to know Pascal's triangle, but it definitely helps the process. So now what I want to get into for the rest of the video is how do we actually use this formula now? Okay, so let's say we already talked about what this answer would be, right? Exactly two fours. Let me jump back nope, to, well, let me actually go all the way back to here. Rolling exactly two fours, that was 15 out of 216 or about 6.9%. How would I do that without making the tree diagram? So um, I went exactly two successes. And how many times was I rolling this thing? I was rolling it three times. So n is three, the number of trials. The probability of success of rolling a four was one sixth. So what this would look like, the probability that I'd roll exactly two fours, x would equal two. n is our three. And this x again is the two. This is how many successes we want to see happen. So three combination two times the probability of success, which was one sixth. How many of those one sixth successes did I want to see? Exactly two. So to the second power times. Now what's the probability of not rolling a six or rolling a four? This would be that five sixths that we kept talking about. And how many not fours would I have to roll? Well, again, if n is three and I want to roll exactly two fours, then that would mean that there's one roll left over that gets to be a not four. Now, 
if I were to type all this into my calculator, which we're not going to do because in the next video, we're going to talk about the calculator command that's going to give us this answer. So this video is all about how do I write out the formula because this is really your work for the answer. So this would be the work that I'm going to be looking for. On my test, this is the work that the AP exam is going to be looking for. So this would be the work to get to that answer of 15 out of 216 or approximately 6.9%. But again, we're not focusing on what the final answer is. What's the actual math that's happening to get that without the tree diagram? So let's look at the next one. What is the probability of rolling no fours? So this would be the probability that x is equal to zero. So out of three rolls, I don't want to have any successes times the probability of rolling a four, one-sixth. How many of those do I want to have? None. Times, what's my failure probability? That would be five-sixths. How many failures do I want to see happen? I'm going to want to see three, not fours happen. Now again, we already talked about what this probability was, right? This was, um, let me jump all the way back, 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 back. This was 125 out of 216, or 57.9%. Again, we're not focusing on the answer. We're focusing on how does this formula play out. So this would be the main thing that I'm looking for for today. In the next video, we will talk about how do I now actually use the calculator command to tell me that that is 125 out of 216 without the tree diagram. All right, what's the probability of rolling at least 1-4? Ooh, at least 1-4. So now, instead of this being an equal sign, would be an inequality. So x is greater than or equal to 1. Now, here's what we need to do in these situations. This is really equivalent to rolling a 1 or rolling a 2, or rolling two fours, I should say, sorry. 1, 4, or two fours, or rolling all three fours. So this inequality really represents three different situations here, and we would need to add up those three situations. Now, we get to use some abbreviated work like we've been doing with the mean and the standard deviation. So we're going to do the x equals 1 case. So out of three rolls, I want one success times a one-sixth chance of success, but I only want one of them, times a five-sixth chance of failure. And if I want one out of three successes, then that means two out of three are going to be failures. Now, I'm not going to do the 2 case. I'm going to put a plus dot, 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 and then I'm going to show the work for the x equals 3 scenario. So out of three rolls, I want three successes times a success rate of 1 sixth, and I want three of those to happen, times the fail rate of 5 sixths, and how many of those do I want to happen? None. Now, some of you might be going, well, 5 sixths to the zero power, that's just 1, right? Anything to the zero power is 1. Do I really need to write that 5 sixths to the zero power? And I would argue, yes, go ahead and write it out because that's a part of the formula that you're showing work for. Now, to figure this answer out, we would have to add together, and let me jump all the way back. We would add up uh, the three probabilities for the x equals one case, the x equals two case, and the x equals three case. And we could add those up, or we could use the complement rule and say we don't want that 57.9%. How much is left over for the other three scenarios? So again, that is going to have its own unique formula. So again, today's focus is just how do I use the formula to represent this? How do I show my work? All right, the last one we're going to do together before we get to the you do, right? Yep, you do's next. Is what is the probability of rolling no more than two fours? I should have an apostrophe S there, sorry. All right, so no more than two means we don't want to see anything go above Two. So we want to be less than or equal to 2. So that means at the minimum, we'd want to see the 0 case, or we could see the 1 case, or we could see the 2 case. And so again, we're going to show the work for the 0 case, we're going to show the work for the 2 case, and then we'll just plus dot 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 over the x equals 1 case. So for 0, out of 3 rolls, we don't want to see any successes with a success rate of 1 sixth, and we don't want any, 
sometimes a fail rate of five sixths, and we want all three of them to be failures. Plus dot dot dot. Now out of three rolls, we want two successes. So three combination two times one sixth squared, we want two successes. Times five sixths, we want one failure. And so again, there's our work that we're going to use to get our answer from the calculator tomorrow, again, without the tree diagram. So now the you do problem. So pretty similar setup here. I got some different numbers. I got different trials in, and I have different probability of success, P. But I just want you to write out the formula part, just like we were just practicing on those last four examples. Try it out on these three instances. And we will discuss these the next day in class. Good luck.